I'm David Resnick, a partner in Bills and Sunbergs Corporate and Finance Group. I'm excited to welcome you to a timely discussion on investing in South Florida's booming real estate market. Over the past several years, there's been a surge of out-of-state investors looking for different ways to deploy their funds in South Florida. This has resulted in an increase in ground-up developments, as well as an increase in the acquisition of value-add properties. But as many out-of-state investors are learning, sometimes the hard way, South Florida is unique. It has its own challenges and opportunities. Today I'm joined by Danny Matz, Senior Managing Director at Newmark, a global commercial real estate services and advisory firm with approximately $2.5 billion market cap. Danny Matz is well positioned to provide to us his insights on the ever-changing market in South Florida. Danny, thank you for joining me. Let's dive right in. It's no secret that there's been a boom in Florida's real estate industry, and it's touching multiple different types of asset classes. Have you noticed any trends in certain asset classes dominating different neighborhoods? It's a great question. First, thanks for having me here, David. I'd like to touch on kind of, you know, two things. One, the new asset classes or the hot asset classes. And, you know, it's pretty obvious that multifamily is kind of dominating South Florida. And that can kind of be broken up into kind of a couple different ways. One, like for rent multifamily apartments and then for sale condos. I mean, Miami is a developer's town. There's cranes everywhere, you know, not just in Miami, but, but all of South Florida. The particular neighborhoods that are really booming, uh, if you talk about Wynwood, downtown, Brickell, you know, those are three adjacent neighborhoods. In, in addition to kind of Edgewater is also, you know, booming when it comes to multifamily and uh, for sale condo. Just in Edgewater alone, at one intersection of the corner of 26th and Biscayne, there are 3,000 units under construction. And that's already after, you know, several thousand units have been delivered uh, over the past few years. On the luxury condo side, it's, it's, you know, developers keep building as if, like, you know, like nothing's happening and, and the market's not ever gonna slow down. And you've got the Baccarat residences, they're, con- you know, related to converting reservations soon. Aston Martin's gonna be delivering soon. LSA and Edgewater uh, just TCO'd and, and residents are moving in. It's, you know, it, it's unbelievable the pace at which developers are building luxury condos. In regards to different neighborhoods, as you know, Miami's been more built out, looking what's happening in Broward County is really interesting. Taking Pompano, for example, there are several multifamily and condo projects under construction, you know, with, you know, you know, blue chip developers like Related, five years ago, seven years ago, that would have been unheard of. The rents that they're getting there, the, the condo prices they're getting there are, are really remarkable. I think, you know, as investors are looking for opportunity, for sites, for waterfront sites, also looking at the uh, affordability gap, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, uh, other markets that aren't Miami are, are a very compelling story. Other than multifamily, what's interesting in the market? That's a, it's a good question. You know, there's an incredible amount of inve- investment activity across all property types in, in South Florida. I think it's really interesting what's happening in some of these emerging asset classes like truck parking, industrial outdoor storage, cold storage, marinas, car washes. You know, five, seven, ten years ago, you know, they weren't really recognized as a you know legitimate asset class. But not not only are they attracting a significant amount of investment activity, it's coming from institutional equity, opportunity funds, high net worth family offices, sovereign wealth funds, and especially on the, the truck parking, marinas, car washes, it's kind of being viewed as the next like private equity roll up opportunity. So it's really incredible how much capital is chasing these deals in South Florida right now. So do you see this as more of a covered land play? That's a good question also. The truck parking, I look at it as kind of case by case, but it it's that's how you kind of underwrite the the downside. You know, the, the rents they're getting from uh, truck parking operators, you know, sometimes right now is exceeding that of industrial rents, which is crazy because industrial in South Florida is white hot. And, but the, the land is so expensive. But in, in the long run, an investor or a lender, it's good to have optionality. So you mentioned that multifamily, industrial, commercial, all these different asset classes are, are finding ways into South Florida. Is there a particular order in which they come online? For instance, does multifamily come first, followed by commercial, followed by industrial? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. I think it's dependent on which neighborhood we're talking about. In Wynwood, 
the residential has come first and there's a ton of residential under construction. And now there's plenty of office that's right behind it. And that office market is, is very well leased, which is a kind of a new kind of burgeoning office market. You know, everyone knows Brickell and downtown and the little submarkets within Miami Beach. But Wynwood as, as an office market is, you know, really starting, I'd say, to mature. PricewaterhouseCoopers recently just signed a lease there, which isn't a tenant you would think would necessarily want to be in Wynwood, which we kind of identify with, you know, more startups, tech firms, entrepreneurial firms, but PwC realizing they need to be where a lot of their client base is. So that's that's what's interesting what's going on with Wynwood. It's kind of the opposite in downtown in Brickell, which, you know, historically have been big office districts, but as of the last five, 10 years, more multifamily, more condo developments have come out of the ground, delivered, leased up, sold extremely well. And these, you know, it, it, it's obvious why people are attracted to Brickell and downtown. You have the amenities and, and downtown in particular, it's a huge pipeline of, uh, of multifamily development, of office development. You know, in the next five years, you know, it's, it's gonna be transformed similar to the way that Brickell has been transformed over the last 10 years. And then what's happening with Miami World Center is, is incredible. You know, this huge area of land five years ago was, was pretty barren, is, is being developed by you know, a variety of uses, multifamily rental, apartment, uh, condo, uh, office, retail. It's pretty incredible. While talking about the industrial asset class, you mentioned that money is coming from a lot of different markets. How are you seeing investors change their strategy on the multifamily side with increased rents? Multifamily has had a wild ride the last few years. From an asset appreciation standpoint, you know, we're seeing 50 to 100% uh, increases in value over a 12, 24 month period, which is really unprecedented. And, and coupled with that, and what's happening at the same time is rent growth, you know, 10, 20, 50% in some markets in South Florida. And drilling down into each property, the lease trade outs are remarkable. We're seeing that in properties that just delivered and are leasing up at a, at a very fast clip. In addition to older properties where investors are going in and, and renovating units and, and increasing rents. You know, value add multifamily has changed a lot in the last 10 years. You know, 10 years ago, a value add investor could expect to see a 20 plus IRR return. You know, where cap rates are today, that's probably closer in, in the low teens. So the landscape has definitely changed. There's a variety of investors that are looking for multifamily investment opportunities in South Florida, from pension funds, pure play REITs, opportunity funds, and just you know your, your run-of-the-mill value-add investors. It's been extremely competitive to buy multifamily the last few years in South Florida, especially the last 12 months. I have a very interesting seat working at Newmark because the Newmark multifamily investment sales team is the number one uh, multifamily investment sales team in Florida. And I work very closely on a lot of the sales and the financings. And what's been an interesting trend over the last month is how investors are adapting to, to rising interest rates. So we have a few things happening. Interest rates are going up. Cap rates don't really seem to be moving. So how do in investors adapt? I'd say the last 12 months on any deal, you know, call it you know, garden, mid-rise, high-rise, anywhere in South Florida, you know, the broker markets the deal, calls for best and final. They've got 10 to 15 very strong offers, you know, from institutional groups to value add groups, good, good variety there. And over that 12 month period, the broker has been achieving uh, a sales price anywhere from 10 to 20 percent above like the guidance, above the strike price that, that they we're guiding the borrower to or the, the, the seller to prior to taking on the deal. That's just because there is so much demand, so much capital, just chasing opportunity. This was the same for 70s, 80s value add deals as it is for 2021 kind of core deals that are just delivering. It was just crazy the yields that investors were going to accept. That has changed very fast in the last three to four weeks. What was 10 to 15 best and final offers is more like three to four. Tours are very light. Investors don't quite know what to make of the new debt markets, whereas a borrower might be able to borrow 75% at like 275 over. That's more like 75% at 350 over, and the forward curve is very steep, and it just doesn't make some of these deals palatable anymore. So what does that actually mean? Like how, how do investors actually get deals done? What we're seeing is kind of a thinning of the buyer pool. It's not such a interesting mix anymore. You've got like the, the institutional guys that can buy all cash, like Blackstones, Brookfields, 
where interest rates aren't really affecting them. You also have some core plus buyers uh, like TPG, for example, who can use low leverage, 50 to 55 percent LTC, and that pricing is in the low to mid 100s. So that still makes sense to buy a, a three cap in place if you really believe in the rents. So the, the the rents is the real story here because they've been growing very fast, and you know who's to say that they're not going to still grow? You know, four and a half dollar rents in Miami. That's you know three thousand dollars for a 650 square foot one bedroom apartment. Like that's a lot of money for uh, a one bedroom apartment. Like does that go to you know, 3,500. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if uh, if rents can be sustained, if they're going to grow, you know, with uh, with the current demand, you know, from from the tenant base. So, as a hedge to the increasing rents and I guess the unpredictability of the multifamily market with these rents increasing, are you seeing any push towards workforce and affordable housing? I think everybody knows that there's an affordability crisis in Miami. I think the question is like, how do you build affordable housing with government incentives? And also what is like really affordable? So you spoke a little bit about increased rents. A lot of residents from out of state are moving in. What impact is that having on the multifamily market? Yeah, there's a lot of new tenants in the market, whether it's COVID or lifestyle or, or a mix, you know, people moving in from New York, Chicago, LA, all over the country for a variety of reasons, are really, you know, you know, driving rents up both for multifamily, for single family residences, for condos, and we're seeing that all across Miami. And it feels like that's here to stay. You know, people are wondering, oh, are people gonna go back to New York? I don't I don't particularly think so. You know, that's so that's you know a huge factor in, in what's been driving rents the last twelve to eighteen months, and it doesn't seem like that trend is slowing down. Danny, thanks so much for joining us. You've gone a long way in educating our viewers and providing them with different tips or different things to think about before investing in the South Florida market. To our audience, thank you for tuning in. We look forward to providing you with future podcasts on new and exciting areas in the real estate market. All of our podcasts can be found on our website, www.billson.com.